let us discuss our second query and in the second query we shall be dealing with some tables and from the query we shall have to find out that what are the tables should be involved in the query execution so here is the query for us find the names and cities of residents of all employees who work for vsnl so here i require the employee name and the respective city of that employee as output and that employee must be working for the company vsnl so whenever such query will come or any query will come at first you shall have to find out that what are the tables we should be dealing with in the query execution so here we are having this pre existing pre discussed schemas so manages comp company works and employee so you know that employee and the respective city is available in the employee table and which employee is working in which company that is available in the respective works table so in the works table we are having the company vsnl yes we are having the company vsnl so these three employee names must be coming as output with the respective city okay so that is my query so always remember finding out the respective tuples required for the query execution is a big thing so at first we shall have to think about that we shall have to uh, do some homework on this issue okay now see here we have written this query select employee dot employee name comma city from employee comma works where employee dot employee name is equal to works dot employee name and company name is equal to vsnl so now the thing is that here in between this works and employee we are having this employee name common so that's why we have written employee dot employee name is equal to works dot employee name so that we can have only the feasible combinations because whenever we are writing employee and works after from that means they are getting attached through the operation condition product that means it is going to form all possible tuple combinations of employee and works so now what is happening whenever we are going for employee dot employee name is equal to works dot employee name so we are considering only those tuples or records where employee name column values are same so that's why now we'll be working with and company name is equal to vsnl so in this way the query can give me the answer employee name is common in between employee and works so that's why if you write employee name that will produce ambiguity so i must be mentioning that from which table we are picking up this employee name so here we have written this employee dot employee name so instead of employee dot employee name if we write works dot employee name then what will happen as this condition implies that we are selecting only those tuples or records where employee dot employee name is equal to works dot employee name so here instead of writing employee dot employee name we can also write our works dot employee name in case of city city is can come only from employee because in the works there is no city attribute so in in uh, in case of city we can write employee dot city or only city because there will be no ambiguity there in this way the query can get executed but the, this query can also be done using nested sub queries so this is our nested sub query so here you see there is one query which will produce some temporary table in the memory on which the outer query will be working so what is the query in that case select employee name comma city from employee where employee name in select employee name from works where company name is equal to vsnl so it has been written here so here you see we are having this nested sub query so from the employee we are picking up this employee name and city whenever this employee name in in is nothing but a membership it is denoting the membership that means whether this employee name is belonging to this set generated by this inner sub query so that is select employee name from works where company name is equal to vsnl so here we are supposed to get three employees that is dilip ashok and sanjoy and dilip ashok is residing at kal sanjoy is residing at mum that is mumbai and another one is our dilip so dilip is residing at kal so we are expecting the output coming like this so that will be the output of this query now question is coming in mind that which query is better here so if you go for this you see in the employee table we are having 1 2 3 in this way if you go on counting we are having 10 tuples are there in the company we are having in the company we are having four okay so here also we are having 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 
So, we are having this 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes, I should be having 10 here because all the employees must be deleted with some of the companies. So, here we are having 10 tuples, here we are having this uh, 10 tuples are there or records are there. So, this is my box and this is my employee. So, here in the memory we are getting this 10 cross 10 number of tuples are getting formed for this condition operation, condition product operation. But here you see this outer query is dealing with 10 tuples and the inner query is dealing with 10 tuples. So, as a result of that during runtime, this query will produce 10 cross 10 number of tuples in the memory and this query will produce 10 plus 10 number of tuples in the memory. Let us suppose we are having say 1 lakh employees. Now, just consider the figure 1 lakh into 1 lakh and this is 1 lakh plus 1 lakh. So, you can easily feel that nested sub queries will be having uh, is more optimized if it most more optimized query in its execution and during the runtime, this query will produce lesser number of tuples or records in the memory compared to this one. So, that is why it is better to write always it is better to write nested sub queries whenever it is possible. Do not go for condition product always. So, in this way we have discussed that what are the different merits and demerits of different ways of query writing and we have, we have given you the solution of this query number 2. Thanks for watching this video.